Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now, we'll be analyzing the surge of kidnappings and its effects in Nigeria. Nigeria is experiencing a severe security crisis with a surge in mass kidnappings, especially in the northern regions. Since late February, over 600 people, including 300 school children, have been abducted. These incidents echo the 2014 Chibok abductions by Boko Haram, which gained international attention and led to the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. Recent kidnappings include over 200 people abducted by Boko Haram. Um, and in Bornu State on February 29, 287 students have taken from a school in Kajina State on March 7 and 15 children kidnapped from a boarding school in Sokoto State on March 9. These incidents have been attributed to Boko Haram and local armed gangs known as bandits. The rise in kidnappings is fueled by Nigeria's economic crisis, high unemployment, inflation and food insecurity. Kidnapping for ransom has become a profitable industry, with armed gangs expanding their territorial control. The Nigerian government under President Bola Tinubu has adopted a no-ransom policy and is actively working to secure the release of hostages. The government's response includes ongoing security operations to locate and rescue victims, although these efforts are expected to take time due to the remote locations of the kidnappers' hideouts. Activists and organizations like Human Rights Watch are urging the government to engage in dialogue with the kidnappers to resolve the conflict and prevent future incidents. Now, joining us to discuss this is Samson Ajibade. He's a criminologist and security expert. Good morning, Samson. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. All right, so we're talking about the surge of kidnapping. And, you know, from the little text that I just read, we've seen that it's, mm. it has become the most profitable business in Nigeria. And a lot of people are hinging it on um, uh, insecure, or rather on food insecurity. They're hinging it on unemployment. They're just saying, oh, yeah, we don't really have enough to put food on our table. And so um, they're being driven to this form of criminality. But I want to just get your take on it. How did we get here? Because we've seen from Chibok girls till now, it's just, it's just been um, rampant in our nation. What are some contributing factors that you have seen personally that you would say, yes, this is the reason why um, kidnapping is profitable so much in Nigeria? Yeah, thank you so much. Aside from uh, economic uh, factors, mm -hmm. and even some schools of thought would, wouldn't agree that uh, uh, the state of the economy causes crime. However, that is, that, that's, we can't take away. So, um, kidnapping and even uh, criminal acts, I say it will be time. There are people, even when they have food on their table, even when they have all it takes, when they have all, they will still venture into crime. So that is one of the reasons some, some schools of thought believe that uh, economic reasons are into, are into tenable. However, we would also consider that the cause of kidnap, uh, of kidnapping in, uh, in the southwest, in the, in the northwest, in the north, vary. The part is very from each region to another. In the northeast and the northwest, <clears throat> we know that it is uh, due to banditry and even terrorism especially the bandit kidnapping. So kidnapping for ransom and even some of them kidnapping to mount pressure on the federal government to release some of their fighters. So that is why I said that the rate of kidnap the causes are different from region to region. Mm. So the, the, the ones in the Northeast, not with the kidnap, not just for economic reasons, but because there is an ideology attached to it. And when some of their fighters are killed, when some of their fighters are arrested, they are in prison, they kidnap, they kidnap and even abduct women and children to mount pressure on the governments. So that is it. Let, let us come down to, to Lagos here. The Lagos State Police Command foiled an attack last uh, week. But we, uh, let, let, us, let us just give a background to it. Last year, I think that was late April. There was an uh, an Igbo man, a Zendigo, in, in Lagos here. He threatened to bring in the, the high club into, into Lagos, 
to help secure their markets, places, and all, and even to protect the interests of this region. In another man's land, in Lagos here, during that time, during my analysis, I was with, I was on platform and, and I did my analysis, and some were like, I don't a very good one. I said, no, it isn't a very good one. However, even before he said that, he would have been building in fighters even before he, he said it out. And afterward, the rate of kidnapping be, uh, uh, began to increase in Lagos here. We have Bologna being kidnapped, families being kidnapped in Sherry, different parts of, of, of Lagos. Thanks to the Lagos State Police Command that, that, uh, that was on a trail of a criminal gang for over eight months, and they were able to bring them down. So now, if I would look at the cause of kidnapping in Lagos here, the one that was a uh, that, that 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 the one that were trained by by the Lagos State Police Command, I would say it is not just a it is for economic reasons. Not that ideology there's an ideology attached to it. So before we even know, before before we begin to analyze so deeply, we need to know the causes of this kidnapping and abduction in each of the region of the federation. However, even for for years, over a decade and a half, that's when we fighting terrorism in in Nigeria. It seems uh see nothing or little is being done. Why the the the, fed, the federal government and even the state government they feel oblivious, they still tell us we've done enough, we've done this, we've done that. And uh, especially what I'm what my concern here is the use of uh, of uh, children, women as uh, as boomers. Aside kidnapping. Where do they get female bombers? Where do they get a child terrorist to attach bombs to them? To do bomb uh, open places. These are some of the people kidnapped. Now let us begin to analyze the cause in each each region. Banditry is different from uh, from terrorism because banditry has no ideology. Banditry isn't new in a society. All they want is just to loot, to steal. But over time, when the uh, the rate of terrorism increased, and they were being attacked by the federal forces, some of them being decimated, scattered all around. In fact, some of them even went to the federal capital territory that we thought would be the safest. The reason we even have kidnapping in the federal capital territory on the rise. So, and even a lot of our people, they feel I, in, in Abuja, when I'm in Abuja, I, I got all, I'm safe, I'm all. After retirement, I don't need to come back to my state. I just stay in Abuja because that is the safest. But it's now on the other side now. Now, let, we, we've established so, the fact on, that, uh, Mr. Ajibade, we've established the fact that um, yeah. uh, kidnapping can be for various reasons. Uh, possibly that's why uh, the federal government is finding it difficult to rein it in because it's not a one shoe fits all kind of solution that they can have. In your experience or in your capacity as a criminologist, what would you suggest yes. that the federal government does differently so that this spate of kidnappings will reduce? The first is this, if you've been fighting them for over a decade, then we should, we should apply the kinetic uh, uh, force. Let us have a standby team to always respond to, always respond to district calls. Look at the one the Lagos State government did. Intelligence that I remember the last time I was here, you asked if the, the government has enough intelligence to, to fight crime. And I said the government has enough intelligence. The one we saw in Lagos attests to, to this. So intelligence, they have it all. So there should be a standby force. Standby force to always respond to distress uh, calls, to always attack these people. However, we should also discourage the youths and even the coming generation from venturing into crime because when they just venture into any crime as time goes on they could have risk kidnapping if we do not provide employment that is why i'm coming in with economic uh, uh, reasons now if you don't pro uh, provide the basic if there's no social justice provide the basic necessities do things create employment create facilities sociabilities that would discourage people from venturing into crime then it will continue this is the reason, aside the kinetic something, we need social justice. If there is no social justice, I tell you, the rate of kidnapping will keep increasing. On the other hand, kidnapping is an organized crime. A poor man does not venture into kidnapping.
That is it. So when I say an organized, what I mean by an organized crime, they have good weeks, they have people uh, with them, they have the support of probably big weeks who would always stand for them. In fact, they have a lot of lawyers, they have every uh, every uh, every resource, uh, they have the resources to always stand to always uh, stand for them and even uh, uh, even before the court of law. So this is the thing here. These people, it is an organized crime. We should let uh, social justice prevail and let us have a standby force to uh, to respond to this first cause. That's it. All right. Uh, okay, so, I mean, there's no way we will talk about this and we wouldn't even visit um, state police. So what role do you think that local community um, vigilante groups, for instance, we have the Amoteco, and I think it's something like that that we've been talking about, trying to mirror that to have state police. Do you think this would have a massive impact when it comes to, to kidnappings as well? Yes, 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 especially in intelligence gathering. State, uh, this, this community oriented policing system would help in gathering intelligence. However, when we, when we look at, we've had a blueprint for community policing, or either maybe what you call it uh, community oriented policing or state policing. What have been their, their success rates? We see the success of Amoteku in those states, how they've been trying to, to arrest a lot of situations and all like that. So we need to uh, to localize the policing architecture. We need to localize the security architecture. Security itself is local. If we do not localize it, I tell you, we will just keep uh, fighting, fighting, fighting for years without having anything to achieve. You don't centralize the policing system. Even before independence, we add a regional, we add the community oriented policing. So, and this country was much more, much more safer. However, the activities of this uh, Amoteku or the semi former uh, security architecture must be controlled. We have seen that even you saw the powers of the police, of the, of the other arms of government. So, they should be well monitored. That is it. But they are good at intelligence gathering. Even while they gather intelligence, there should be a strong formation to always respond to calls because you can't be the AK AK forty seven to to local uh, to local security uh, officers. You can't. No, no, no. You don't give it to them. They only have uh, their guns, and so that is it. So even why, and even the criminals, the uh, abductors, the kidnappers, they have sophisticated weapons. And the only security architecture that has the right to carry sophisticated weapons are the uh, security, the states, and the former security formations, the police, the military, and other agencies. The local, uh, the local community uh, officers wouldn't carry sophisticated weapons. So that is it. So um, I hope that the government, you know, tries to put all of the measures in place to be able to curb this menace in society. Kidnapping is obviously a criminal offense. And you said something whereby um, poor men um, don't really go into that because it's an organized crime. And I remember seeing a video of about six people who have been killed and taken by the police. Um, and most of them, it was, being, it was being rumored that most of them were kidnappers. We just hope that the government is tackling down on this um, and we just have a better and safer na Nigeria for us all. Um, Samson, I want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely having your thoughts on this one. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Have a lovely day. Okay, we'll be speaking with Samson Ajibade. He's a criminologist and a security expert. And we've just been analyzing the surge of kidnapping in Nigeria. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. We want to say thank you for joining us on The Breakfast. We'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Rome Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Adgaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye. Have an amazing day.